Good morning. We're on lesson 63, and we're going to be using our old friend completing the square in graphing circles. And the instructions in our problems will tell us to describe the circle and what they are asking us to do, and they'll be specific. They'll either tell us to describe it by giving us enough information for us to tell them its center point and its radius, or they'll ask us to graph it, and we'll still have to have its center point and radius. Now, when we did completing the square in Algebra 2, I told you that you would be asked to use it sometime in the future. And of course, now is the time you're going to be using it to graph circles. And if you've been using the quadratic formula, you've been taking a shortcut because you won't be able to use it today. Remember the standard forms of a circle are x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And that would be a circle at its point of origin. If it were offset, as we learned in Lesson 42 earlier in the book, this format would indicate an offset. In other words, it's offset by whatever the values of h and k are. Those are called standard forms. And we're going to be asked to use those today. And we're going to be using completing the square. All right, what are you going to do with this? x squared plus y squared plus 6x plus 2y minus 15 equals 0. Now that is in general form. And you already see you can't use the quadratic. Well, the first thing you want to do is bring the like variables together and group them. The second thing you want to do is to isolate the constant. So I'm going to do them both at the same time. I'm going to take x squared plus 6x plus something. Is that starting to look familiar? Plus y squared plus 2y plus something equals 15. Now one of the basic differences between this and just completing the square earlier in the textbook is we now have two completing the square. So every time you add something here, you add it here. And every time you add something here, you add it there also. So don't forget. So what's half of 6? That's 3. What's 3 squared? 9. So we add 9 to both sides. What's half of 2? 1. What's 1 squared? 1. We add 1 to both sides. Recall, we take the square of the two n terms, and that's the sign we're going to use. We take the square of the two n terms, and that's the sign we're going to use. So this becomes x plus 3. Remember, it's the square root of that that we're using. Squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 25. Now, r squared, if 25 equals r squared, then r equals the square root of 25, so we'll use 5 squared, OK? Same thing. It's r squared, which is the format we're using. What value for x will make this 0? A negative 3. What value for y will make that 0? A negative 1. So we already know, if we're asked to describe this, its center is at a negative 3 comma negative 1. And it has a radius equal to 5 units. And again, we went from the general form to the standard form. OK? Let's try one more. They're really not that difficult. If you follow a procedure, as we've said time and time again, or an algorithm, and just make sure that you don't rush through it and take a shortcut until you're sure what you're doing, OK? Let's take a look at another one. Problem 2. 2x two squared plus 2y squared plus y minus x minus 4 equals 0. A couple things. That's the general form. We want the standard form. And remember, when we complete the square, we need unity. So we're going to divide everything by 2. 
that gives us x squared plus y squared plus one half y minus one half x minus two equals zero. If I combine the like terms and isolate the constant, so I get x squared minus one half x plus something plus y squared plus one half y plus something equals two. Now remember a long time ago I told you to either take a half or multiply, uh, divide by two or take a half of it. So we're going to multiply by a half. And one half times one half equals one fourth and one fourth squared equals one sixteenth. So we're going to add one sixteenth to both sides for that and that's going to be the same. Okay, now remember we take the square root of the two n terms and we use the sign, the first of the two signs. And so that's going to be x minus one fourth squared plus y plus one fourth squared equals. Let's take a look at this. There's 16 sixteenths in one so that's 32 sixteenths. That gives me 34 sixteenths. Now you don't want to reduce that yet because we, that's r squared. So r squared equals 34 sixteenths. So r is equal to the square root of 34 divided by 4. So to put this in the right format, which is r squared, we would say that this is the square root of 34 divided by 4 squared, because that's the value of r. Now to describe this, we would need a 1 fourth here to make that a 0, and we need a negative 1 fourth here. So the center is at 1 fourth comma negative 1 fourth, and r is equal to the square root of 34 divided by 4, and I think I took my calculator and that came out to about 1.5 units. If you were told to graph that, you could either write the radius down as that and draw a line and approximate by using 1.5, okay? And your last favorite three letters. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.